And I was a girl who wanted to hear from God. Well, that night I heard from him in a very clear way. He said, I want to be first in your life. I'm going to be the very first. I would love it, he said, if I asked you to do something, you would say yes. Without asking me why, or questioning, or going, ah, maybe. He said, in fact, if you say yes to me, you'll never have to worry about the outcome. I was the girl who wanted to control the outcome. I was one who was going, well, if I pray for them and they're not healed, well, what will they think of me? I can't heal anybody. I'm a nurse. I'm a healer professionally by nature. I mean, I've got these, the gifts of compassion, those kind of things, and I've got the knowledge and the medical experience, but I actually can't heal. Who heals? It's God. I can't do that. But he's saying, Judy, if you will trust me and obey, you never have to worry about the outcome again. You never have to try to control it. You never have to try to make it happen. You don't have to try to manipulate it and force it to happen. If you will trust me enough to say yes, no matter what, the outcome will be good. And it's my outcome. It's God's outcome. And it's for his glory. It's not for me, not for Judy B. It's for him. It was a turning point in my life. It was a huge turning point. He also showed me that he would be my husband, that he would take care of me, that he would be faithful, that he would be tender. He would never, ever bring me a sexually transmitted disease, and he hasn't. <laughs> Believe me, he's faithful. He'd never hit me. He'd never yell at me. He'd never lie to me. He would never abandon me. He would never betray me could never leave me for somebody else. And you know something? He never has. He holds me very, very close to his heart. I want you to know, it's the most amazing love story ever in my life. I am beloved. And he calls me beloved. And he calls me his own. And he takes care of me in a very real way in a very amazing way. <clears throat> I never got back with that guy. He returned to town the next day. He wanted to get back together. We never did, by the grace of God. Because it, it, there was not a bone of commitment in him. He wanted to play. Oh, he wanted to make out. He wanted to kiss. He wanted to steam up the windows. He wanted me to wear bright lipstick and take it off. But he did not want to commit. And I'm a girl who needed commitment. I'm a girl who needed the real deal. And um, God protected me. He still does. Oh, and then there was the deceiver guy. I, I am really sorry about that one. That was a tough one. Not really. It was just, I'm not going to go into those gory details other than just God taught me. At that point, enough to say, God, I'm done. I'm done trying to figure out who I'm supposed to marry. I'm done trying to make something. I, I can't. Would you pick him out for me? And when you do, would you let me know? And would you make it really, 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 really clear to everybody around me? <laughs> like, my family? My family has never once approved of any of the guys I dated. Not that they were actually met them. <clears throat> they were picking something up for me that I couldn't even tell you. They were hearing something from me that I, I, I didn't know I was revealing. But apparently I let them know enough to think that these guys were not the right guys. And as it turned out, they were right. Oh, that drove me crazy. Can I tell you that drove me crazy? But God gave my parents wisdom. So anyway, I'm still single. I'm still waiting. God's promised me a family of my own, and someday it's going to happen. I don't know when. I might be 75. But he's promised me, and so I'm waiting. And I have joy along the way. It's incredible. True love. What do we expect of true love? Faithfulness, commitment, honesty, protection, kindness, tenderness. I have all of this with my God in a very powerful, very real way. Jewelry. He takes care of those needs too, believe it or not. 
Oh, my beloved. Last year, I kept walking past this little kiosk in Alaska. I was home in the States for a year. And um, there was this lovely set of jewelry, pearls actually. I wanted to wear them today, but it didn't go with my outfit. Um, they were pretty amazing, they were pretty lavish, and I just kept thinking those. <laughs> That's an amazing set of jewelry. It was a, a necklace bracelet set. And I kept walking past it because I had to go to the store for some stuff. And um, I thought, there's no way I can buy that. That is just way too much money. I mean, it's just over the top. I can't, there's no way I can afford that. Well, one day I was walking past that little shop and it said, special sale. <clears throat> I thought, well, how special is a special sale? Let's find out how special that special sale is. Now, that's not a good thing to do if you don't want to go buy something. But I just had to know how special it was. So I walked into the little store and I asked, how special is your sale? And she said, well, actually, it's really quite special. And she told me the special price, and it was so special, I about died. I said, what? What's wrong with this? Are you sure that's the sale? She says, yeah, it was 82% off. 82% off. It had been $389. It was down to $49.99. Somebody had given me $100 that way to use on my own self. I said, so that's for the bracelet. She says, no, that's actually for the set. I said, what? I mean, we're talking triple strand, four color pearls. Not tiny pearls. Lavish. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Beautiful. I said, are you serious? Money's burning a hole in my pocket. I got money, it's given to me. Special sale, I bought them. I was going, wow, this is amazing. This is too special to leave behind. So I, oh, I couldn't ask them. Those are so beautiful. They're going to match my new suit perfectly. And they did. Oh, my. Oh, my. Not this suit, but another one. And um, I was so happy. And then by evening, I was going, Judy B, you greedy girl. How could you do that? You're a missionary. You're supposed to be a little more humble, girl. <laughs> Oh, I started feeling so guilty about that jewelry. I was going, man, I need to take that back. But I really like it. But oh, that was pretty selfish. Or something like that. The next morning I woke up, it was Sunday morning, June 8th. And my little alarm clock went off. It was my Blackberry, and it said, Happy anniversary, Judy and God. Happy anniversary. And just like that, the Holy Spirit said, happy anniversary, Judy. How do you like those pearls? They're from me. I was like, what? Those are from you? He says, yeah. They're from me. I had somebody give you the money for them, didn't I? He's like, yeah. He said, I had them put them on special sale just for you. It's like, you did? He said, and you had to go past that place again yesterday, didn't you? He's like, well, yeah. And you just saw him, right? It's like, yeah. Happy anniversary, Judy. You really are my beloved. I really do love you. It's how my husband treats me. I find it pretty remarkable. Because, see, that was the anniversary of that night. It's actually our 17th. On the 5th, we had another dramatic encounter. The 5th anniversary. I didn't realize that moment that it was the 5th anniversary. See, God keeps anniversaries, too. I don't know if you know that. We actually celebrated one today. Communion. He keeps anniversaries too. In fact, he asks us to keep it. That's true love. That's my real true love. He gave me precious pearls, but he gave me something far beyond precious pearls. He gave his life for me died for me. It's coming back for me. He gives me joy. Oh my. It's true love. On the fifth anniversary, <clears throat> this prayer meeting night, normal prayer meeting, except for it was extraordinary. The presence of God was so thick, so holy, so amazing in our prayer meeting that Saturday night that I couldn't stand. I remember just, it was better than you know, that can of Gushionka stuff, that sweet, rich milk, sweet stuff. You know, you can eat it by the spoon. I love it. Go on your coffee or on your cake or whatever. 
The presence of God was incredible. And he said, Judy, what do you want from me? I was going, what do I want from you? I want a husband. It's top of my list. And oh, that's not the right answer for this moment. I thought, oh, I need, I need this, I need this, I need this, I need this. Uh, just a minute. This is a Solomon moment. Remember Solomon? What did Solomon ask for when God came to him at night? He asked for wisdom. Isn't that the most amazing answer? Yeah. I've always thought so. I've, I've always been amazed at that answer. Let's look at 1 Kings 11. I mean, actually, I'm going to use scripture. You were wondering. 1 Kings 11. <laughs> the week that this happened, that this moment with God happened, I had been reading in Kings, my daily devotions. And Monday morning, I came across this passage. And I saw something in here I had never seen before. I have read this I don't know how many times. But that day, all of a sudden, something leaked out at me. So we're going to read this together, okay? 1 Kings 11. Verse 1, King Solomon, however, that however is a good clue. King Solomon, however, loved many foreign women besides Pharaoh's daughter, Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Sidonians, and Hittites. They were from nations about which the Lord had told the Israelites, you must not intermarry with them because they will surely turn your heart after their gods. Nevertheless, Solomon and all of his wisdom held fast to them in love. He had 700 wives of royal birth and 300 concubines, and his wives led him astray. A thousand women in his harem. He reigned for 40 years. Simple math will tell you that he had a wedding approximately every two weeks for 40 years. Now, there are some guys here that would think that's absolutely amazing and fantastic, and probably every woman in this room would go, you've got to be kidding. A wedding every two weeks? How special is that? Or maybe he did mass weddings. Maybe he married 50 at a time. I don't know. Can you imagine the expense of it? But then he was the richest man. Wisdom? Is that wise? Political alliances. He was gathering them right and left. But a thousand women in his harem? Okay, they led him astray. As Solomon grew old, his wives turned his heart after other gods, and his heart was no longer fully devoted to the Lord as God as the, as the heart of David his father had been. <clears throat> he followed Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Sidonians, and Moloch, the detestable god of the Ammonites. So Solomon did evil in the eyes of the Lord. He did not follow the Lord completely, as his father David had done. He actually goes on to say he actually built altars for them, and he offered sacrifices. Do you know what sacrifices were required by Moloch and Chemosh? Burnt offerings, children, human sacrifice. I remember reading that and thinking, what? King Solomon? offered up human sacrifice? It says he followed their ways. He did what was required of these demonic idols. Had you thought about King Solomon offering up human sacrifice? All week long that tormented me. I thought, how could that be? How could this man go so far from having not one but two dramatic encounters with God in a time when few people had those kind of encounters. How could he go from so clearly hearing God's voice? How could he go from asking for wisdom from God, the Most High, all the way over to offering human sacrifice to idols? How could he go from the truth Knowing truth and knowing the true God to something so far removed and demonic and hideous and evil. Evil. Absolute evil. How could his heart be so badly transformed? It's supposed to go the other way around. It's supposed to go from evil to being transformed.